Hello, and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty and to the 2019 Annapolis Sailboat Show. Every year, Janice and I come down here to start looking at catamarans for the future. We want to find that perfect boat that we can sail around the world on. Now, this year, we decided to do something a little different because we're not just going to walk around and film it ourselves. We're only going to do an episode if we get a guided tour so we can get all the facts. If you've been watching the channel, you know we've already done a bunch of episodes so far with the guided tours. Some boats we absolutely love, some boats we were like a little lukewarm on. If you haven't seen that, there is a playlist called Annapolis 2019 that has all the episodes in order, so you can check those out. Now, this episode is going to be about the Balance 526, which is a performance cat, no doubt, but it has a lot of crew in comforts, so stay tuned. We anchor and hoist the sail. Okay, last year we did a uh, review of the 526, but it was not a dagger haul version. Yeah. So this is gonna be a little different. This is Andrew from Hi. Balance. Yep, I'm Andrew Hodgson. I'm the technical director of Balance Catamarans. Um, and we are on board Alani. This is haul number six of the Balance 526 model. Um, and this boat is a little bit different than Dragonfly, which is the boat we were on last year. Um, it's That was a keel boat version. So we offer both keel and dagger board. Um, this boat is uh, daggerboard. So, as you can see, I don't know if you want to follow me on deck, yep. but there's not a lot of difference in in, uh, in what the, the the appearance of the boat, obviously, because um, they're flush deck daggerboards. Oh, okay. Um, so they're captive. Yeah. So um, basically, they live inside the trunk there. Um, the fact that they don't stick out above deck actually means that they're they have to be. Um, much stronger than a, a, a dagger board that does protrude above deck because you know you only have so much living in that trunk when it's all the way down right. so the trunk has to be super beefy so the the trunk is solid carbon fiber uh, and it's like two inches thick it's a beast and and so the board is uh, the board is a carbon stringer essentially a right. carbon post uh, with e-glass you know so it has some kind of crash box in it um, but it's also super super stiff and it's balsa cord uh, it's the only balsa cord thing on the boat and the reason we did that is it makes the board buoyant so you actually pull the boards down and then oh. when you're let when you're bringing them up as long as they're not under load they just come right up on their own that's great so yeah it's it's kind of a, it's kind of counterintuitive maybe but yeah. it, it works really well it's super functional and and you work the boards right here you know so these these lines so draft with the uh, board up is like three and a half feet draft with board down is 7.2 yeah. yeah. and how does that change the uh, sailing performance you know, we, we actually ran uh, like a legitimate scientific study on the two boats and the, the dagger board boat performed slightly better in all conditions. Um, the main difference was in upwind, right? And mm -hmm. so the boat will sail at 45 to 40, 40 to five, 40 to 45 apparent. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're doing that, uh, the, the dagger board boat points better um, and sails faster in, in eight, to 12 knots of wind was the main difference. Um, other than that, it's pretty, pretty similar. Pretty similar. Okay. Yeah. So Lani uh, has the carbon rig, uh, it's Southern Spars uh, carbon mast uh, with conventional, you know, like stainless uh, rigging. Um, this is called the hay rack boom. It's an aluminum boom. You can get a, a carbon boom if you want it. It's an okay. option, but uh, this is called the hay rack boom. It's kind of cool. Um, in that it has this mesh underneath, so it, it catches the sail quite well and keeps it tidy in the stack pack. But it lets some air in there, so you know if it gets rained on or whatever, it doesn't get standing water and right. cold water. So it's kind of a cool little, little design. Just like the old boat, everything's run to the helm. Uh, it's all very easy to use. By you know a couple with you know it can be double handed very easily without too much trouble. It's the whole design ethic was that we want to have a comfortable safe real voyaging boat that's also fast that's right? also, got performance that's also aspects, performance right? yeah that's but unlike some of the some of our competitors that are more race oriented you know we have like conventional uh running rigging and, and sail handling equipment um so that the average person if you've sailed if you've sailed more charter oriented boats you can come onto this and, and have a pretty good idea of what you're doing it's not going to be a too steep of a learning curve that's great yeah, yeah sure uh, well so we have the self-tacking jib of course um you know, it's it's easy to use. It's self-tacking. It, you know, everything's run to the helm, so all very simple. These sails are uh, they are Ullman warp drive, so it's like a fiber path sail. It's a kind of like a 3DI um, 
you know, high performance sail. Um, so you've got a, a large, like a code zero? So this is, yeah, Screecher, yeah. Screecher? Um, so you can run the Screecher to about 80 degrees apparent. Um, and then after that, you gotta go to the jib. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, she'll really cook with that Screecher. That's, a, that's the, the reaching sail. That's the sail you probably yeah. wanna use the most. Solar, I see the solar up here. Is that yeah. standard or and what's uh, the amount it, you get? It's come standard, yeah. Well, it's an option in our essential cruising package. Right. So, okay. you know, the base price is, is a kitted out boat. I mean, you can sail our you can sail away on our base price boat, right. um, but I wouldn't take it cruising. It's more of like a, a weekend warrior type boat. Okay, so fully um, kitted out to live aboard, what would you what Fully kitted out to live aboard is like the essential cruising package. And so that comes with like a water maker, a generator, um, solar, yeah. um, you know, all, this, all the things that you're gonna want for cruising. Um, and this is 1300 watts of, uh, of solar. Uh, and it keeps up quite well. This is a lithium boat, so it's 720 amp hours of lithium, uh, uh, fully Victron, uh, full Victron systems. Um, and uh, you can also charge, it can, this particular boat has a 7K uh, Northern Lights generator. Okay. And um, they also have the big Balmar uh, alternator chargers. So they're 100 amp chargers. So. You know, when you're motoring at, you know, say 2200 RPM, it's pushing like 160 amps into those lithium batteries. And it can take it, because yeah, lithium, lithium, you know, um, so they charge, you know, hour and a half, you're back at full oh, charge, an yeah, hour, cool. depending on where, the, you know, the battery's at. So, okay. yeah, it's a super efficient boat, you know, it's made to be easy to manage, easy to sail, easy to work on, you know, so we'll keep on going. Yeah. Let's go. um, this boat has all electric winches, so that's part of that's another part of the essential cruisers package. Yeah, I mean it's conventional standing rigging. You the you have the option for uh, composite rigging, like E6 rigging. Um, it's a it's a pricey option, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so no none of our um, buyers have have chosen to do it yet. But mm -hmm. if you wanted to, you could go full carbon spar boom. Uh, E6 rigging. You could even do carbon launcher on and, and cross beam if you really wanted to, but you know, you just, you're talking big bucks for, for what amounts to like something like 18% of weight saving. So yeah. it's, it's not, you know, the price per, the, the pound per dollar doesn't, yeah. the math doesn't usually work out. Right. Yeah, so, but it's an option if you want it. If you want it. Yeah. Um, yeah, here's another, this is the, the port dagger board here so you can kind of see the controls. Okay. You know, real easy. I, I can, I usually, as long as they're not loaded up, I pull them up by hand, pull okay. them down and pull them up by hand. Um, this is another cool feature on this particular boat. He went with the Antal rolling cleats. I don't know if you've seen these before, but they're super cool. You can, uh, they're, they're like oh, okay. really functional, you know, so you have it, use it as a standard cleat. Um, you put it away, it looks clean, and then you can also use it as like a turning block or something in, okay. in a given, you know, yeah. whatever situation. So. Our engines are oh, right engines, here. yeah. So. This boat has the 57 Yanmar. Uh, the, the boat comes standard with a 47, but for a couple grand you can upgrade to the 57. It's actually the same block, uh, so it, it doesn't affect the weight at all. The only, the only, you know, difference is you get an extra 10 horsepower per engine, and, and uh, you know, burns a little bit more fuel. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, obviously, easily accessible engine compartment. Um, you know, another design ethic of the boat was to make everything really accessible so you know all the systems are are in a place where you can easily get to them every plumbing connection every electrical connection um, you have access to it from a space where you're not wedged in a bilge or anything like that so, so the outdoor uh, outdoor the cockpit uh, area here so he went with the uh, kind of standard table. Uh, it's got storage underneath and we've actually got the life raft in there. Um, but you can get a drop down table that this comes down and turns this whole thing into a big day lounge. This boat is the last boat probably that's not gonna have a helm seat right here. So the um, all the other 526s and some, some of the ones we've already built have a helm seat right here, which would come out that way when you uh, the Versa helm, right? You yeah. swing the Versa helm down to the down position, yeah, and uh, and then you're sitting and it's high enough where you can see out the windows, you know, so you can drive comfortably down here. And they decided to not do it because they, people just weren't. Well, he he has a, a oh, drink, so this guy he has a drink drink. fridge right here. Oh, he chose to not have. A yeah, seat. he chose oh. to. So that's a big thing with balance. Is there, the 526 is is 
semi-custom, so you have a lot of say to make changes. Um, you can add different size chart plotters. You can, you know, you can delete or add cabinetry or drawers. You know, and obviously you can pick your interior finishings and you know exterior finishings and all that stuff. So this is a swiveling. Uh yeah, that's that swivels. It's been beat up on during the show, so I've got it unlocked. So it, you know, but you pin it right there when you're up here, and then you swing it down here when you're down here. Um, it's got dual throttles, obviously. Um, so when you're driving down here, you switch to this one. Uh, they're ZF uh, fly-by-wire transmissions. Um, you know, super easily to operate. And then when you're up there, switch to that throttle position, and you know, you're driving. As you can see. Again, everything's run to the helm. It's all really straightforward, easy to operate. So uh, this is uh, the standard 526 in interior. Um, he went with the, the zebra wood, as they say in South Africa, uh, which turned out really nice. Uh, and he's obviously got like a little darker color scheme, but even, even with the darker colored uh, cushions and stuff, you know, there's so much brightness and, and, and light in the interior that it, it actually still like charcoal, right? works really well. Um, yeah, so, you know, kind of, I think we've, you know, you've seen the 526 interior, so we'll talk a little bit about the new model uh, coming in either late 2020 or early 2021, uh, the Balance 482. Okay. We got a lot of feedback um, from buyers saying, you know, I love the boat, I love the build quality, I love the performance characteristics. It's just a little bit too big. Yeah. Like there's, you know, a lot of buyers are, are more comfortable in the mid 40s range. Yeah. Yeah. So we said, okay, well, we obviously need to do something about this. So we decided to do a 40 foot, 48 foot model. Um, it's going to be basically the same boat as the 52, just a little bit shorter. Um, the salon and cockpit area are almost exactly the same size. We didn't take any space out of uh, the salon and cockpit. Um, the length is lost in the bows, so the trampoline's gonna be a bit shorter. Okay. And the, the scoops, the transom sits back a little further, so the davits will sit back a little further. Okay. Um, but that, that's where you lose most of your length. We're also losing a foot of, of beam, so it goes from 27 foot beam to 26 foot beam. And so the, uh, the halls, uh, you know, the living space in the halls is a bit narrower, but you know, uh, it's still queen beds, still same orientation, still big shower and, and head mm -hmm. aft in the owner's cabin. Um, and uh, and then a split head and shower uh, okay. in the in the so it's essentially the same layout, just a little snugged up. And uh, we kind of calculated that the performance is going to be about ten percent slower with the loss of waterline and in in a higher beam to length ratio. And the price will go down, of course. Then the price will go down. <laughs> so we're figuring this is like a twelve to fourteen knot boat. You know, happy place. Yeah. Um, obviously it can go faster than that yeah. uh, if you want to push it, but um, that's where it really likes to be. Um, and so we're thinking the 482 is going to be like an 11, 12 knot boat, right. you know, so okay, good. yeah. But uh, yeah, price where the 526, the base price is 1.4 million okay. um, and kitted out. So this one uh, as it sits is 1.7, but it, that's you know, a cruiser, it's, the well, it's got the carbon mass, yeah. it's got lithium ions, it's got the upgraded engines. So it's got some high dollar items. Right. Um, so, you know, um, the, the 482, is, the base price is uh, right around a million bucks. Okay. And we figure kitted out with some nice stuff. It's going to be like 1.2, 1.2 and a half. Okay. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. Anything, yeah, in the gal anything in the galley we need to know? Or is it uh, no, so on the 482, we're, you know, if you go with the lithium bank, we're really um, trying to talk people into doing the induction. convection the induction. induction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that way you delete the, the gas system altogether, which would, yeah. you know, obviously you get rid of a hazard and, and you also open up that space for storage or, you know, sort of sink under there? whatever. Yeah, double yeah, sink, yeah. Fridge, freezer, fridge, freezer, and so the thing you you know you really can set it up however you want. Um, I advised him to go fridge, freezer, fridge, freezer, so that way we can turn one off and mm -hmm. still have a fridge and freezer, okay. and which is which is what we're doing right now. This is empty, so we've got it turned off. Um, but it allows you to kind of save some power. This nav station, mm -hmm. pretty pretty bare. Is there a reason? Because there's everything. So the nav station good. is is totally up to what the owner wants on the on the 52. Okay. The, the 48 is going to be a little more 
uh, cookie cutter because we're gonna have higher production numbers. This this 52 we build like three a year, okay. and they're semi custom. You, the owner has a lot of say in, in how the boat is put together. Um, the 48, in order to keep the price down, we have to keep them kind of you know similar. similar. Yeah. So it's gonna be you're still gonna have all, all the choices with interior finishings and you know and you'll have you'll have some choices in how you set up your helm or and, and your tables right you can pick the drop down tables and the lounges but as far as changing cabinetry and stuff it's going to have to be less options just to but so like this for instance on the 52 he chose to do kind of a bare nav station um but other buyers have done drawers here and gotten rid of the nav station altogether mm -hmm. some buyers have had a full-on nav station with like a swing out stool and chart plotters so it's really up to you i mean however you want to set it up we'll do it i mean this the you know within the parameters of the the boat yeah. we'll we'll do pretty much anything you want to do if you want to come downstairs we can have another look this is a, an owner's version boat but the, this is a guest hall here on the port side um so you have a queen aft cabin right really comfortable um nice um, and then you have a head with a sink in here and then forward of that is a shower which also has a sink which is kind of nice when everybody's brushing their teeth or mm -hmm. you know whatever it's, you're not trying to share a bathroom okay. so um something interesting to look at if you want to back up just a bit so like as i was saying uh, accessible systems right so here's the water maker this is a spectra um 20 gallon an hour water maker um obviously you know easy to maintain easy to access um, if you ever needed to work on it i can just sit right here and, and work on it i'm right. not you know it's not stuffed in a building somewhere right. um and, and along that same line of thought you know um this is the the fresh and and salt water systems here so the boat can the boat has both uh fresh and salt pressurized system so you can run the heads you can switch the heads between fresh and salt which is really nice because say you're on you know you're cruising with the family in the virgin islands you want to have fresh water to keep the boat from getting stinky yeah but if you're offshore and you're worried about water consumption you're switching back to salt oh, great. and 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 uh kind of protect your fresh water supply so again very accessible very easy to work on um you know moving forward it's the the forward guest cabin over here mm -hmm. um an interesting thing about the 52 again uh this is a queen bed we had a client who was six foot five big guy um and he wanted a little more space in the bed so we said okay we'll give you a king bed so we deleted this uh this area right here uh, this cabinetry right here so the bed came out another foot or so mm -hmm. and gave him a king bed so stuff like that happy to work with you yeah um, and it actually turned out really nice. And then, then the front is just storage. Kind of well, so this is area. this is a vanity area, and um, that's another thing we can change. So you have the escape hatch here, mm -hmm. which is really great uh, because you can open that out up at anchor, and you get a nice breeze through yeah. here all the way through the boat. And it's it's in a position where that even if it rains, there you're not going to have water coming in. Mm -hmm. So you know you can sleep at night without having to jump up and close hatches. Uh, when it starts to rain right. uh, but this area some of our uh, buyers have chosen to have a vanity they'll put a mirror here or something and then you have some storage um, the other option is just forward of this is the sail locker the the, the bow uh, locker and so an option is to get rid of this bulkhead altogether because this is the structural bulkhead here mm -hmm. um, and you can drop the that back here which gives you, you know, a lot extra space in the in the sail locker, uh, and then you can go with an oversized Lamar hatch, so you can get those big spinnakers and stuff out of the hatch without, you know, having to struggle yeah. as much. Um, and we still have to have an access to the escape hatch right, right here, right. but you can basically have an oversized storage area right. in, instead of having a vanity. Cool. So. That's what we're that's All right. what the lithium people can do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the owner side so on starboard. You know what everybody obviously the 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 bed is is very similar it's essentially a mirror image of the uh the guest side so this is the owner's cabin uh big queen bed um but the the big difference obviously is it's got an in-suite head and shower 
um, if aft a lot here. more storage too don't and it? a lot more storage yeah, yeah. so I call this the spa all right because this shower is ridiculously big mm -hmm. um, but for, it's it's super size difference I'll let you get in there stand yeah yeah there. here I'll show you I'm so I'm six one just for for reference and yeah. uh, I could do jumping jacks in here <laughs> uh, but okay. no it's really comfortable um, you know, I've even used this offshore, but you know, you kind of got to Yeah, you got space to sit, sit. and yeah. Yeah. Um, relax a bit. But, and, and going back to that theme of accessibility to all the systems, this is my favorite part in that regard right here. Tell me on what other boat you can access this area. Yeah. You know, on most boats, you're going to have to tear apart half your salon to get into this space. So this is the back of the helm. Mm -hmm. This is Edson gears and sprockets. Um, uh, and spectral line, uh, so it's kind of like a race boat uh, type steering system. Right. Has a really great feel, lots of feedback under sail, but it doesn't get overpowered. Um, and then obviously you have solenoids for the, the various winches there. But yeah, so tech spaces are all super accessible um, and it's easy to work on. So mm -hmm. as a captain, that's yeah. a godsend. When things break, you can get it. Yeah, you yeah. can actually get to it and fix it. And obviously most boats are like this. This door slides yeah, so this is, Yeah, this closes off the owner's cabin. If you want to hear, um, don't want to hear people Yeah, talking. if you want to get away from the kids. <laughs> um, this boat has a washer dryer, which oh, that's uh, right. is, yeah, is, awesome. is an option, of course. Yeah. Um, That's a, a must for Janice. She always says, oh, yeah. wash and dry. Sure, sure. She doesn't want to hand wash in a bucket. No, I mean, yeah. or drag it all to the laundromat just, yeah. to, just to get a couple towels washed. Yeah. Um, this is the Victron, has a, the, the 12 volt panel here. I mean, obviously, you have lights and, uh, and then winches and, and whatnot. This is the Victron uh, kind of charge controlling panel. Um, it's, you know, so it's actually really great. You, know, you see our solar charging right here. Um, and then our load, so it tells us our net, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we're at 96%, which battery, cool, which we're charging right now. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, with with fridges and so you're bringing you know, in 822 watts and only using 56. Right? Yep, yep, yep. So, um, you know, that's pretty awesome. You know, we got it's it, the boat is kind of being used right now. We're not plugged in, so. Right. Um, if you were on board in the Caribbean, you got a, you know, the kids got some lights on and you got the fridge running and then mm -hmm. people are going in and out of the drink mm -hmm. fridge, you know, it's going to be a similar situation. Right. So exactly. it's, it's pretty sunny here in An Annapolis today. Yeah, so it's, it's nice. nice but yeah. So how many like air conditioning units and stuff is there? There are four and they're, they're 10,000 BTU in all the rooms. There's one in this hall in this cabin mm -hmm. and then one in each cabin on the guest side. And then I think it's 16,000 BTU in the, in the salon. In the salon. Cool. Yeah. And so I can, with this lithium, with a 720 amp hour, I can run two cabins, so two 10,000 BTU units all night. And if, you know... And they have soft start, so you can start right off the batteries? Yeah, yeah, it runs off the batteries. I don't yeah, run the generator. Some of them don't, yeah. right? They don't have the no, soft start. No, 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 so really we, we run off the battery, so yeah. you're not running the generator all night. Yeah. And the battery bank will be at 65%, uh, uh, assuming, you know, it stopped charging at when yeah. the sun went down. Yeah. So, and we and we say we start the ACs at nine o'clock at night, yeah. um, we'll be at like 65% in the That's morning. Great. So you, in theory, you could go probably two days without charging and running ACs at night, which is pretty darn good. That's right. Um, and that's been my experience. You know, we've run this boat on charter a few times, so, um, right. you know, of course you, the charter gets it gets hammered. It gets yeah. hammered on yeah. charter, yeah, so, yeah. which is another, another, we'll take a quick peek here at, at uh, oh, yes. all the Victron electronics. If you want to sneak in this there, one. yeah. This one. But you can see how super clean it is. Um, you know, I've run a lot of boats and and you know a lot of the um the higher end boats these days are using systems like eplex or c zone that kind of stuff which is a, a software controlled um yeah you know that's the boat i'm used to dc system yeah, yeah. so and Oops, i've okay. always been a fan of um keeping it simple yeah. because you know if that eplex uh, well what i like to tell people is you know like how many times has your laptop frozen you know, mm -hmm. if that Eplex freezes, you all of a sudden can't flush toilets, you can't, can't turn, turn on lights, you yeah. can't get your electronics on, you know? Uh -huh. So we have kind of kept the ethic that, you know, keep it simple and, you know, keep it clean, very yeah. professionally yeah. done. And, nice. and, and, you know, it's gonna be less headaches in the long run. So yeah, for yeah. Sure. Yeah. to give you guys an idea of the, da since this is a dagger board boat and last year you were on the yeah. keel boat, um, this is the dagger board trunk right here. So 
you'll see this is there's still quite a bit of storage in here oh, yeah. and the dagger boards are canted so they come down at an angle and you'll see that the storage gets less and less as you move down so oh i see there, yeah, yeah so but but you still have some. effectively you know yeah. yeah you still have a bunch of storage so the the only real difference but aesthetically between the dagger board boat and the keel boat is that you know you have a little bit less storage in these cabinets down yeah. here yeah, yeah so it's uh I mean, a lot of dagger board boats, what they do is they just en enclose yeah, it, and it's yeah. useless space. Right? You have a big thing right in the middle of the hallway, yeah, and, yeah. It's, and it's burned space. So yeah, yeah. we've managed to, you know, still keep, keep it usable, and, um, you know, and, and, the, and the board's basically hidden. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't have even known. If you were in here, yeah, you exactly. don't, you don't even, forget it. You don't even know. In fact, notice. I did forget until you mentioned that we should do yeah, it. Yeah. Just tons of storage, you know. Um, you know, just for a, for a performance boat, we probably have the most square footage of storage yeah. space of, uh, of, Seriously. Any, of any of the, you know, go Didn't fast know boats. it was a performance boat. Yeah. Based on the cabinetry and yeah. stuff, you'd so think it's a it's cruising. And, and all of this cabinetry as well, I'll mention is, um, so this is the Zebrawood. Yeah. Um, we can do, you know, whatever, you know, we can do maple or, you know, whatever you want, teak. Um, but these are real wood veneers right. with a foam core. So all this stuff is super lightweight. Uh, you get the feel of, of a, you know, like a solid wood furniture, but you don't have the weight of yeah. it. So we keep our, our light ship weight is like is like 10 tons. Now cruising weight is probably closer to like 12 tons. So dry weight is 10 tons for this Yeah, boat? 10 tons, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but cr cruising weight is like 12, 12 and a half tons, something yeah, yeah. like that, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's still, just still really light for a 50, 52 foot boat. Yeah, that yeah, is, so. that's good. Yeah. Okay, that was a great tour, thank you, Andrew. Uh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Thanks and this for is a beautiful boat. We liked it last year as well, yes. didn't we? Yes. A little out of our price range, we admit that, but um, yeah. So I this is for say, the viewer yeah. that has that that 1.7 kind mm -hmm. of price range. In mind. Well, so I would say though, you know, as an example, um, you know, the the price point is the same as a 52 foot lagoon. So similar size boat. Now, granted, the fi the lagoon is a much more spacious boat. Um, performance and, is more but but so but it, yeah but build quality and performance is going to be much higher than this so you know if you're looking to buy a charter boat for the Caribbean this isn't your right choice but if you're looking to buy a, a family voyaging boat you might want to you might want to think about a balance yeah very impressed okay thank you hello hi and welcome back to cruising off duty as you can see we are home what we always do in these episodes is we review the footage to make sure we don't miss any of the pros or cons we write a list as you can see janice writes a very long list show them the list it's long so we'll try and keep this very brief we have to keep in mind that this boat is performance minded yeah a lot of the other boats we've seen except for the hh which was very nice uh -huh. are more cruising based and therefore they're going about interior volume and lots of woodwork mm -hmm. and all that stuff which we love yeah but so we're going to try and go at this as if we were really interested in a performance catamaran yeah though it did have a lot of benefits like a lot of cruising perks yeah but okay so let's go with the pros and cons you start with what you like uh, i love the the real wood the real wood wood veneer so this this guy had zero wood that's not what i would choose but um i like the fact that it could be real wood of any other type um exactly yeah the beds were fabulous the the the, the beds at the forward were big and uh, there was lots of room on either side they were queen size and yeah um the owner's unit or owner's suite was gorgeous mm -hmm. down there and the bathroom was unique and special that it was at the aft the and not yeah the spa <laughs> shower I, I totally feel i would totally spa in there yeah, hang out so instead of being in the bow and having like a narrow kind of restriction it was big and wide and open like as big as our bathroom here almost mm -hmm. and the shower was fabulous i didn't really like that that was one thing that no other boats had anything that was yeah. comparable. Yeah. Uh, the indoor salon table was huge. The kitchen was mm -hmm. a nice little, it was nicely laid out. Um, and One thing you didn't love about that area though, you said it was a lot of sharp corners. Oh yeah, very, it was Euro. Very, yeah, it's a Euro look. Uh, yeah. It's a more uh, squared off edges of everything, yeah. which is kind of the look they're going for, probably the modern yeah. um, European it, it look. Would probably appeal to men more yeah. than women, I would assume, like like that clean line yeah. kind of feeling, I like roundy, shapey. Yeah. And it's also very white. A lot of the yeah, surfaces they don't were have white. The wood paneling, extra weight and stuff. Yeah, a lot of the, well, although the table inside was wood. But I just think a lot of it is trying to minimize weight and they yeah. didn't want to throw a lot of extra countertops that were uh, wood or some other or cat or corian mm -hmm. or something. So it did feel very white, but that might also be this owner's choice because it is a very customizable mm -hmm. boat. So the windows in the main salon were huge. They seemed very tall compared mm -hmm. to some of the other boats that we were on. Like there was a lot of viewing area, which I loved. And um, you could have the washer dryer. Another thing is like, 
uh, there's a lot of storage compared to other performance performance cats, cats such yeah. as the Shomer. Like the the, the downward uh, owner's unit had a lot of cabinetry, and the Daggerboard didn't take up a lot of the interior volume as it does yeah. in other boats that have daggerboards. You almost couldn't tell it was yeah, a daggerboard exactly. boat when you were down there. Yeah. <laughs> And that's it. Okay, I'll go into my stuff, which is a little bit more on the, on the uh, how it sails or how it how you handle it. What I did like is the dagger boards don't stick up above your floor, uh, your deck. So when you're walking, you're not having to step around yeah. it. That is a great feature. They're I love concealed. that. Concealed. They're very well concealed. Concealed dagger boards and how yeah. you have to pull them to get them down and they float to come back up. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really cool yeah. idea. And when they do come up, I guess they don't come through the deck. No. Which is amazing. Because um, that's one thing we haven't liked about diggerboard boats is that usually you have to walk around them and it's tight and then you've got the running rigging in your way and, you know, just issues. And inside, usually, you can tell it's yes, daggerboard. It's it takes up chunk. a huge chunk of your interior volume. So for a daggerboard boat, that's an amazing design. Yeah. So I like that. Um, it's a nice large engine room with lots of area to, to work. Um, I definitely would think it's a 52-foot boat. It said it comes with a 47. The option is a 57 for just a few thousand dollars. I think when you're spending one point for $1.7 million, you're gonna spring for the extra few thousand dollars to get the bigger engines. Mm -hmm. So, but that was a 57, you saw lots of room to work around it. And uh, yeah, good, clean engine room. Uh, we loved the Versa Helm. So the yeah. wheel, you can either pivot it up to the top and sit up high, and that way you got you can see down at your bows yeah. when you're docking and all that stuff. Or if you're just checking your instruments and yeah. making the odd change, you can have the wheels swing down and you have a second mm -hmm. seat, lower seating area. Yeah. Um, although this model didn't have it, but there's it's a not, it, yeah, lower seating area. Be. So that was really a nice feature. Mm -hmm. um, the instrument panel was very cool, how it swiveled to it. No matter where you were sitting, you could have all the instruments facing you. That was very neat. Um, I liked the fresh and salt water system. Uh, I think most people would prefer a fresh water toilet system because salt water does smell uh, when you use it as a toilet, as your toilet flush water. Uh, so fresh is better, but like you said, if you're doing an ocean crossing and heaven forbid your water maker goes down mm -hmm. and water is premium out there, you can just switch yeah. it over to a salt water flush, yeah. which is a very smart idea. And it obviously would take extra work and plumbing to get that set up, so they did that. That is great. I thought it only being 10, 000, uh, 10 tons mm -hmm. is amazing for a 52 foot boat. And mm -hmm. that just yells back at that whole, we're all about mm -hmm. performance, we're about performance, yada, yada, yada. 10,000 pounds is, uh, 10,000, 10, 000, 10 tons is very light. Mm -hmm. The Exquisite that I love dearly and you love is probably twice that weight and it's a 50 foot boat. So you can see the difference between a performance cat and a, and a true cruising catamaran. Mm -hmm. And um, that is pretty well, much it. I forgot to mention the two sinks. <laughs> but yeah, it has some genius designs yeah. that other boats that, that are unique to it. Like yeah. the, the Versa Helm and the giant aft shower uh, bathroom and um, I think you've already oh, the, the, the dagger boards. Like no other dagger boarded yeah. boat have them concealed so well. Yeah. Like I could actually happily live on this boat despite it being a performance cat and the mm. newer, smaller model would even yes. be somewhat in our ballpark maybe. Yeah. Well, a used version. A used version. This, this bigger one is not. Yeah. Um, but this is only 52 feet, which is probably yeah. more than we would need anyway. No, yeah. yeah. So A 45 would be perfect. I think the, the smaller one's 48. More. But oh. still, that's four feet shorter and a foot thinner yeah. and maybe more to our size. So there mm -hmm. we go. we got something to look forward to in a future Annapolis Sailboat Show. Hopefully so it's now a contender. Have the 48 perhaps. there to look at and mm -hmm. really consider, maybe. Yeah. And then think about it used. So if anybody ever wonders why we keep looking at these boats brand new, and then we always almost always end with, except for a few exceptions, it's too expensive for us, yeah. is because we're looking at these boats at these shows new, thinking, okay, it's worth a million dollars now, but if we bought a five-year-old one, What's we might get it for what yeah. we Yeah, like a car, home. the minute you, we, yeah. you drive it off the lot, it depreciates a lot in the first year to two to three years. Mm -hmm. And the same with the boat. I mean, people will pay top dollar to get a brand new boat that only, only that has been out of the factory and only you've touched. As soon as somebody else has owned it for five years, there's that whole, did they maintain it? Has it had any structural issues that they're just trying to get rid of the boat now? And so that drops the price significantly. So that's why we often look at the new boats with the mindset of what this boat might be in our price range used. Yeah. So there we go. Just overview. We do like this boat. We do very much. Like, I would happily live on this. Two thumbs up. Um, I prefer more wood, but you are getting other, mm -hmm. you, you know, you get more performance for... Yeah. It's lighter because of the wider... Yeah. If that became look. something we cared a lot about, mm -hmm. right now we don't. But as much no but we might grow to like performance if the price was right well so, i mean yeah this is definitely one that i i was very happy with the entire boat there wasn't anything about the interior that i didn't like yeah. versus 
some other boats that I would yeah, not seen, see myself living on. You've been watching the channel. Anyway. We've, we've reviewed some other yeah. performance cats that we have not liked. So this one is a winner. If you want performance, this is definitely one you should consider. It's yeah. a little up there in price, but anybody who wants performance is usually expecting to pay for it because yeah. you start getting carbon fiber parts on the boat and that's going to you know, you know that price is going up. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that's it. Hopefully you found this uh, uh, entertaining or informative, most likely informative. If so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up and... Subscribe. There you go. Almost forgot your spot. Um, anyways, that's it for now. See you next time. Ciao. We anchor and hoist the sail. A special shout out to our patrons that show the channel some love with more than just thumbs up. We love you guys. If you want to know more about that, go to patreon.com slash cruising off duty. And if you want to follow us in any of our social media, the easiest way is probably just to go to cruisingoffduty.com and all the links are there. If you're one of those lucky people that has a sailboat in some beautiful tropical area, being able to sail 12 months of the year, just know that we are super jealous. Can't wait for the day where we can do the same thing because we are living with winter here in Canada and it's tough. So we have a Caribbean cruise booked for this January just to get away from it because we hate winter. Anyways, enjoy your sailing and ciao for now. <laughs>